Some of the commands that were sent to the spacecraft accidentally caused the spacecraft to rotate about two degrees away from... Hello, everybody. It's Kelly, your solar system ambassador. I'm back. How are you? I'm back to talk to you with another Cosmic Monday quick chat about some news that NASA has been making lately about a quick issue with one of their spacecraft. But first off, if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, hi, I'm Kelly. I am a solar system ambassador for NASA and JPL here in Pasadena, California. And I love to bring the science and missions of NASA to the public in a fun and understandable way. So what we're going to be talking about, if you haven't heard about it in the news, is the little snafu that NASA had with the Voyager 2 spacecraft. So, of course, I have my slides for you. So let's go to those right now. That's right. We are talking about the Voyager 2 spacecraft. Now, if you know anything about the history of the Voyager spacecrafts, there are two of them. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. They were launched in 1977, so they have been traveling for quite a while, for about 46 years. And at this point, both of them have reached interstellar space. So they are the longest traveled man-made spacecraft that we ha have. Um, if you've ever heard about the gold record, they both have a gold record on them. So someday, if some alien civilization happens to um, find our spacecraft, then it'll give them a little bit of information about where we are in the solar system. Now, one of the SAFUs that happened was with Voyager 2, um, with it being over 12 billion miles away from Earth. Um, every so often, uh, as NASA is continuing to send commands to the spacecraft, as it continues to send back data of what it's experiencing out in interstellar space, um, unfortunately, in July, some of the commands that were sent to the spacecraft accidentally caused the spacecraft to rotate about two degrees away from Earth meaning the antenna that it uses to communicate back and forth with Earth um, rotated just two degrees off, and therefore it could no longer talk to NASA. That's pretty incredible, but when you're talking about something as small as a spacecraft, as far away as it is, that little change in the direction of the antenna makes a huge difference. They tried several times to figure out a way to still communicate to it. One of the things that they were able to detect using the Deep Space Network telescopes, um, antennas, is they could still detect its carrier signal. So they could still tell if the spacecraft was okay and still functioning. It was still sending back some data, but in little tiny streams because it wasn't using its giant antenna to send copious amounts of data back to it. So, as I said, they tried various ways to get a hold of it, but to no avail, um, they couldn't get it to rotate back. Now, they figured out many years ago when they were building it that they built into the um, software of the spacecraft that every, every so often, every few months, if something were to happen to it and it was off of its rotation being able to point its antenna back to Earth, it was programmed that every so often it would automatically reorient itself back toward Earth. So if uh, scientists weren't able to command it to rotate back toward Earth, they knew that about mid-October was the next opportunity that it would automatically reorient itself and then they'd be able to pick up the signal much, much stronger and talk to it. But they tried one last effort just the other day, as I said, using the Deep Space Network. Now, we've talked about the Deep Space Network before and what the Deep Space Network com comprises of three different locations all around the planet that are about 120 degree, 120 degree difference in the distance. So that means that at any given time as the Earth rotates, we have a location with antennas being able to talk to any of the spacecraft out in space. So they used the location in Canberra, Australia, and instead of sending the normal signals or commands to the spacecraft, what they decided to do was send a huge, loud, 
burst of a sound. They're kind of calling it a interstellar shout. And this is actually a um, what you would see on the screen if you go to JPL uh, and go into Mission Control. This is what it looks like on their big giant TV monitor um, that they are talking to any different spacecraft at any different time. So at the particular time that I was um, at Mission Control, these were the different ones that were being communicated with at one time. So as I said, they used the Canberra, Australia location, and here's the location on your screen right now. So they sent a giant burst of signal to the spacecraft, hoping that it would detect it. Since it's only a little bit off axis, from being able to point toward Earth. And sure enough, that loud shout out to the spacecraft did the trick. They had sent these loud commands out to the spacecraft and the spacecraft rotated itself just ever so slightly. So its antenna was pointing directly at Earth and everything ended up being A-OK. -okay. Now, because it's so far out there, um, one-way signal to the spacecraft is 18.5 hours. That's how long it takes for the signal to go in one direction. So it took a long time for them to get a signal back that the loud shout that they did to it was successful. So as I said, the um, spacecraft has rotated back toward Earth. Everything is A-OK, -okay. everything is healthy, it's working just fine. But that was a little bit of an intense moment there for NASA. But as I said, there is an automatic program built in that every, every so often it's able to just automatically rotate back if it feels that it's not in alignment and it's not getting any signals from Earth for a specific amount of time. So they had that backup plan in place. And in true NASA, NASA form, they always have backups in place as much as they can. So, but luckily this giant interstellar shout toward the spacecraft was successful. So there you go. There is your Cosmic Monday quick chat information for you about the Voyager 2 spacecraft. Um, I will be back very, very soon with more videos. I have some really cool, exciting things happening. And uh, that's what's taking me so long in between these videos is because I've been working on all of those projects. So if you have any questions about the Voyager 2 spacecraft or anything that I've talked about in this video or anything else that you'd like to talk to, shoot me a message and let me know. And I will research the information for you. I'll do a video on that. And we'll talk about some really cool, exciting space stuff. <laughs> I hope you're doing well out there. I'll talk to you very soon. Bye.